Hey, uh, back to the Chikon and looking at Variation 5, the continuation of Variation 4, which had the... Thema, and then it continued... So that was just the playthrough quickly of the notes. Uh, I changed something the other uh, this morning, and that's thrown off all my reflexes. But that's okay. So that's what that variation is. You have this rhythm in the right hand, and a lot of bass runs. So what's happening in the right hand affects a lot. Uh, well, affects um, many things, but mostly. On the bellows so when we don't anticipate the notes the sound of it's not very clear and it's a little empty and there's no connection between the notes so if we anticipate before then we give a little bit of energy before and after for the heart look at searching for the harmonic changes Okay, so that will help the, the bass phrasing, but also it helps the memory. Uh, it's very important when you're trying to memorize things like chords that are just... It's very easy to... Uh, then I was guessing... So if I don't put any energy or effort or um, movement... I'm creating solo memory blocks of just individual notes rather than connection there, connection, G minor, so all the memory blocks are now slightly larger and with a musical phrase, which helps a lot. The bass um, easily could become very dull and repetitive and... If we just play it as, as not as written exactly, but without any uh, emphasis. A phrasing is a little bit harder to do on the bass uh, because the touch is different and also the air usage is very, very different for the bass because these are the biggest, lowest reeds and they're going to use up all the air and we have quite a few little jumps. So to make a phrase on them, we have to be a little bit careful of the position we're moving in, the direction we're going up and down the baseboard. I'll move across a little bit so you can see. So one phrase. That's two. But you feel that everything's going, moving, there, yeah, it's, it's never the sound like that with, with no emphasis is quite different but it's going to be really hard to try and get the perfect touch and regulate every single note on the bass um, and to focus on that I would rather instead focus on the right hand and how they integrate together. So, screen set. Okay, so, um, that's that position change thrown off all of my memory, which is normal. That's cool, I just changed it uh, a couple of hours ago. And 
that I have to work. So now I have to really associate, rather than focusing now on phrasing and, and to make everything beautiful, I have to associate memory positions. This, that's one. And then I need, so I need to consolidate the basses, memory, and the right hands. As I did that, I was trying to focus on three things in general, really. One was the right hand, all the harmonic phrasings in a flow, um, and then isolating where the bass go on them, and then thirdly, checking the positions or the reflex of my bass. In a few positions, uh, or where I made mistakes, you can, <laughs> you can go back and rewind, you'll see um, the mistake was made... Um, well, there was a wrong note because my finger went to the wrong place. Uh, simple as that, really. My finger uh, had a memory that was slightly incorrect, and it didn't know what to do. So either it went to the wrong place or it didn't, and then there's a last kind of rush to get there. So I'll try it once more, a little bit slower and very exaggerated, just to, um, to show how this kind of con consolidation goes down. So I was cool. a little bit lucky. I got away with one that should have been already a mistake. There was a... I played a mistake there last time. I, I go one note lower. So... So I resolved that by using another finger to give me a guidance. The fifth's already in place. Three notes before. Um, and then gives me a little bit of a position. Uh, yeah, okay, that works really well. So what that, that fifth finger finding the C sharp, so on the quint system, just think of it as a your stradella bass, your your pedal tones. My fifth finger goes to the furthest part, and then I can kind of know all my relative gaps. And then later it drops to F sharp, the note below. Oh, it's, uh, D flat. If you're um, thinking in flat notes, we down here. So, again, we have the fifth finger. Same intervals, that's perfect, that solves the problem. So, if my fifth finger is there and the third finger on the D, D, D flat, I get G, G flat, or G, F sharp, as it's written. So, very, very cool. Let's go a little bit earlier and try to find that. Yes, that works, but still a little bit of a problem because as soon as I arrived on that C, I was like, what do I do now? So that's, that's another problem. Uh, when you change reflex, it's not just to arrive on the note, it's to play the notes afterwards. So let's Look at it one more time and see what I have to change. Okay, 
I'm very lucky there. The D moves to the, the counter row, moves to the first row, B flat. And then everything descends one note. That's perfect. <laughs> exercises on these uh, bass runs. Um, when it's being played of course you can't leave anything to chance. You don't want any any little like oh what's the note now or any any question there because uh, it's a little bit too quick and um, at that well that's actually too fast for the piece but it's going to be not fast but not slow, let's say. And I would like to have the freedom to do a little bit of acceleration and s slow down, frontando, to follow on the. Not exactly like this, but I would like some freedom and liberty um, so I can choose how I want to play and how I want to present the, the building of tension uh, with the harmonics uh, coming up to the next step. So that's uh, that was this morning's uh, work and now that leaves us to another issue that popped up. Um, oh, so that, that part has... <laughs> That's the sixth variation where the recording was uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's where I started this piece just after that. The, uh... So after that, we had all those big runs and we had this... So this is an issue because we have these big bass notes playing with the right hand. And what happens is, as soon as you finish a run, your body says, ah, oh, great, finally finished, and relaxes. But the problem is, you have to make a jump and play again. So we have to prepare the jump and play it again. And to make it even worse, we have repeated notes in the bass, which steal our thunder, let's say. So, so I'll just close it. The bass is... <coughs> so the problem with that is... It's very easy to repeat the bass note when you have uh, a run on it. Sorry. Great. But afterwards, have to continue. We want this very clear. And move. So it's not... Stop, it's not... Stop, it's go. That makes it very difficult. Um, obviously, it could be solved by just actually not really minding and not wanting the best articulation and just... It's correct, notes are right, but not as good. So it's about searching for a real bright sound that we have. So the danger is just this repeated C note as we jump. to help 
me when I have this jump and coming back up, I think to expand my back out. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, to think of the the lats or the both arms to rise outwards like this and you're back to expand that will put tension on the bellows okay so that means that even if your body wants to stop the bellows there's still extra tension now so if I'm not putting any tension on my bellows that's the sound if it have a little bit of tension at the back okay you hear the the volume difference it's not me pulling more it's just expanding pressure chest onto the back of the instrument and the back widening up the straps okay so that <laughs> Try it once fast to see what happens. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and I have to practice it much slower. Okay, so what happens? It's like normal. You're reaching the end of a run, you want to accelerate because you're anticipating to get there. So I have to control that more. Uh, Okay, so this run is more to be regular, have very sharp ending chords, pull, expand the back as I jump. Uh, I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> uh, uh, I have. completely different. I don't have to expand because I want to I want to drive down. So two unique parts on that. One with the big jump, it's expansion as I move to come to the higher uh, uh, middle of the keyboard. And then for the last one Yeah, I want to be thinking of the high voice. Okay, that solves that issue. Okay, so for these runs, I think, uh... So I'm just trying out what kind of articulation I want. Do I want very... Or immediately... I think a that allows a greater articulation change and drive. Where is the bass? Is it just a pedal tone? So really, I use the bass as it comes off to drive the articulation change. You can feel that if I stop the bellows. 
that sound if I don't stop the bellows release the bass and keep on pulling it becomes sharper sharper brighter brighter harder Okay, so I think it's a little bit too much, um, those runs, a little bit too hard. I, it doesn't need to be. on the um, the change in shape of the runs so yeah the second half of oh, the second well, the last third of the run it needs a unique shape to it as well I have to slow a little bit down at the end of the run. So begin a little bit slower. Yeah, begin a little bit slower, accelerate, slow down to the A, to the change, and then accelerate through that. So that should work for both. Uh, sorry, it's my... <laughs> and that will resolve. The runs won't be too difficult, they won't be too uh, hard to understand and not too heavy for the audience, I hope. And yeah, so that's the, the work for today and I'll probably make another video tomorrow. Hope uh, everyone's having a good weekend. Have fun. Bye.